Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode, we're going to be talking about Justin Fields. Uh, should the Bears move on from Justin Fields? Now, this is a question that a lot of people have asked me about on Twitter, um, and just a general topic that a lot of people are talking about in sports right now, because uh, everybody has Caleb, Caleb Williams going to the Chicago Bears, but a lot of people are asking, should the Bears stick with what they got, uh, keep their draft capital, and pick a more interesting prospect, you know, in terms of, is Justin Fields really, is this really what he is? Is there a potential if he gets coached up right, he might break out? Those are questions a lot of people are kind of asking. So in today's video, what we're going to do, we're going to look at what his, his pre-draft profile looked like. You know, what did he look like before the Bears even drafted him? And then look at what his NFL production has been thus far to kind of get an idea of how to evaluate him, if you will. Uh, so first off, looking at his data um, with the mobile quarterback score, as you know, this is the mobile quarterback score. You take statistics, you transform it into a market share score. You look at the total offensive market share, touchdown market share, touchdown percentage, which is the number of touchdowns per touch. And you also look at the average yards per touch score. When you look at all those scores and add them up, you get the mobile quarterback score. One thing that uh, Justin Fields did really well in college was his mobile quarterback score. Uh, the things where he was a little eh came down to like touchdown percentage and touchdown market share. So he didn't really get a ton of touchdowns on the ground uh, compared to his ability to kind of rush with the football. But he still scored a pretty decent mobile quarterback score. Uh, overall in the 80 percentile for him uh, moving on to the quarterback score so this is the bread and butter stat if you're not good in terms of your quarterback score you're probably not going to be a good quarterback unless you develop as a passer uh, the one thing about Justin Fields is he had a good quarterback score and the quarterback score takes a look at the touchdown to interception ratio and the completion percentage of a quarterback uh, it also takes a look at their strength of schedule their strength of team you know how good of a team were they on what was their level of competition, all those different kinds of things. Uh, and when you look at his quarterback scores, he did really well. 99.03 in terms of his BQS, which is his best quarterback score. And then his average score was 91.02 out of 100. All those ended up in the all-pro threshold at the position. Uh, the CQS or average score was a little below what the all-pro average is, but he scored really well. This is also out of 5,359 quarterbacks, but this is a big but. Um, there were some question marks with a couple other things, which, which we will get to. Um, so first off, just getting into athleticism real quick before we get to that. Um, Athleticism-wise, he did the 40-yard dash. He was a 90-plus percentile speed guy at the Combine. So when you take a look at all this information, if you're just looking at the BQS and CQS, his athleticism, you know, he's big, he's six foot four, he's 227 pounds. Um, this guy is the next Josh Allen. This guy is the next name uh, athletic running quarterback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so you look at all that stuff, you go, wow, this guy, yeah, he could be the next guy in terms of that. But the biggest question mark with him came down to his run to pass ratio. Taking a look at all the quarterbacks who tested similar to him based on his run to pass ratio. So these are quarterbacks that had similar BQS scores, similar CQS scores. This deals with their passing efficiency. These are the quarterbacks he tested. We tested with Cam Newton, Pat White, Justin Fields, Alex Smith, Tim Tebow, and Marcus Mariota. Every single one of those quarterbacks, every single one, even Cam Newton, have never been great in terms of their passing efficiency. Never. I'm talking about their average passing efficiency in the NFL. Now they have had success. You know, Cam Newton had success as a pat, you know, as a dual threat quarterback at the NFL level. Um, Alex Smith had success on a run heavy, I repeat, a run heavy offense on the San Francisco 49ers. And of course he went to Kansas City, where they also were more of a run heavy type offense for the most part. And, you know, it took, he took some development. Uh, and then, of course, everybody knows about Tim Tebow. Everybody knows about Marcus Mariota. So Justin Fields tested with quarterbacks who played in run-heavy offenses who 
went to the NFL where it's more pass heavy and couldn't really translate at the next level. Couldn't really translate. So get into his pre-draft outlook. Before the 2021 NFL draft, Justin Fields profiled as a starting quarterback with concerns due to his extremely low run-to-pass ratio in college. Quarterbacks with that profile tend to thrive in the NFL with offenses catered to running football, but most high-profile rushing attacks in the NFL lead to inconsistent results in the win category. So, what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is Justin Fields tested like a quarterback who has to be in a run-heavy offense. And the Bears have tried to do that. They've facilitated, you know, more of a rushing attack. You know, they've led the NFL, or at least came closer to leading the NFL in most rushing categories uh, for many different seasons. Uh, But the passing game was just awful. (laughs) It was just terrible. I mean, uh, especially in 2022, uh, you know, their passing, it was awful, but they were able to run the football um, in terms of, you know, getting Justin Fields involved and those other sort of things. So you're going to have inconsistent results when you just rush the football because it's a passing league, guys. As much as we want to do this dual threat mobile quarterback type stuff, most quarterbacks that that are consistent, the quarterbacks who really um, consistently go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl are quarterbacks who win from within the pocket, are typically on, on, on uh, teams that, you know, um, pass the football more often, you know, it's more consistent in terms of ending up there, you know, because if you have say nine out of 10 times, the quarterback who wins is on a pass heavy offense or at least above average pass offense versus teams who have more of a run heavy approach. And when I mean run heavy, I think the most stylistically similar type offenses to that are like the Seattle Seahawks with Russell Wilson, uh, looking at what the 49ers did, of course, with Colin Kaepernick and Alex Smith, um, course we we've seen what happened with lamar jackson uh we've seen what happened with uh uh, josh allen to a certain extent they've gotten a little bit more pass happy but for the most part these offenses that lean towards the run are inconsistent in terms of their results inconsistent in terms of winning playoff games inconsistent in terms of going on and winning the big one the big enchilada the super bowl you know with the exception of maybe the jalen hurts led philadelphia eagles that one year um but that's the biggest concern. That was the biggest pre-draft concern with Justin Fields. Moving on to his post-draft data. This is where things get a little iffy, guys. So the thing I'm showing you right now is looking at NFL quarterback data. So this t- takes into account touchdown to interception ratio at the NFL level, completion percentage at the NFL level, um, yards per attempt, adjusted yards per attempt, um, QBR and TQS, which is the uh, touchdown interception ratio plus completion percentage um, added together plus you know strength of schedule and stuff like that. Um, Justin Fields, as a 22-year-old quarterback, because that's basically what Pro Football Reference had him as entering the league. He was below average about with what most quarterbacks, what the average uh, production of a quarterback at his age typically does. So as tw- at 22 years old, he was below average terms of what most quarterbacks do at age 22 when he ended up being 23 he still was either below average or slightly above average in terms of his touchdown to interception ratio and yards per attempt Um, and those those other sort of data points and i would say that he improved the most as a passer in general from 2021 to 2022 in terms of his overall statistics yes statistics and we're going to get to more of a micro look at it because I know a lot of you guys are going to go, well, statistics are a team thing. Yes, they are. But you need to understand the circumstances, which we're going to get to a little bit later, in terms of like the micro data for him. But when you look at this data here, um, there wasn't any big jump in terms of his production. Most quarterbacks typically improve from their first year to their second year, or at least their third year. You don't normally wait four years or three years for a quarterback to finally become who he's supposed to be in your offense. Um, you know, that's arrested development, as they say. Uh, and not and, and again, I understand Justin Fields has had a lot of different things to deal with in Chicago uh, in terms of different offensive coordinators and everything else like that. But he just has not improved as a passer at all 
despite him having as good of, I mean, he didn't even do what Marcus Mariota did, which is Mariota was great in terms of his, uh, his touchdown interception ratio. You know, touchdown interception ratio was great, just his completion percentage was a little eh. Uh, and then, of course, his yards per attempt and other things like that were also eh. But Justin Fields has consistently been just average in terms of his production. And then uh, when you look at him from 2022 to 2023, he just barely improved a little bit there. And, of course, yards per attempt went down a little bit. Uh, and this is out of 1,983 NFL quarterback performances uh, since 1948. So, um Based on the aggregate view or the macro view of Justin Fields' production, it wasn't that great. Uh, didn't really have any major improvements in terms of his data. Didn't have a year where he really showed you that I'm here. Yes, there can be excuses for that, but that is concerning. But then when you get to his micro data, so this is Justin Fields based on his um, bad throw percentage, on target percentage, which deals with accuracy, and his batted throw percentage from 2021 to 2023. And these stats are reported by Pro Football Reference. So if you're trying to figure out where these stats come from, this is where they come from. Um, the sample size for the study I did was 192 NFL quarterback performances uh, since 2019, not 2009. I'll have to, you know, but since 2019, this is uh, 192 NFL quarterback performances. Based on this data, um, the above average score, so most quarterbacks who win, you know, quarterbacks that teams that that are above 500 percent in terms of their win column typically score 61, 67 and 60 in terms of these specific categories. Justin Fields had a 10.24 score in terms of his bad or throw percentage, which means out of 192 NFL quarterbacks since 2019, uh, Justin Fields was 10 out of 100. Then when you look at his on-target percentage, which deals with accuracy, he was 36.46 out of 100, out of 192 NFL quarterback performances. And then his batted throw percentage was 29.79 out of 100. So he's making bad decisions with the football based on his bad throw percentage. He's also below average accurate. And he has a huge amount of batted throws at the line of scrimmage, which is crazy to think because he's six foot four. Normally, when you think of batted throw percentages, you're thinking about guys like Kyler Murray or uh, any number of other shorter quarterbacks who, you know, are trying to see above the offensive lineman and then they get their, throw, their throws batted. But he had a below average batted throw percentage. <laughs> In terms of, again, the, the worse you are in that percentage means that you've got more balls batted, uh, you, had, you know, in terms of that particular metric. So, um, you know, taking a look at these numbers, he's, it's not great, guys, um, in terms of a three-year average. So this is based on Justin Fields from 2021 to 2023. So he's, it's tough, it's tough, man. So this, this is the post-draft outlook for Justin Fields. Um, it's a bit grim. Quarterbacks do struggle in their rookie seasons, but they tend to bounce back well in their sophomore seasons if they're going to be a substantive quarterback. Fields struggled more than most quarterbacks his initial season in the NFL, but then did not develop much after that point. It's tough. It's a tough call to move on from a quarterback this early, but the initial concerns from his pre-draft profile have showed up in the NFL. So again, I don't like to be the one to say, I told you so. I don't like to be the one to say that Justin Fields has no chance of developing as a quarterback at all. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is this, Fields has not taken that extra step in his development as a quarterback for whatever reason it's been arrested he hasn't really developed much as a passer he's playing in these run heavy offenses where the explosive plays are not really there on in the passing game so you start to question if he's ever going to get there in enough time to really trust him as a passer so in other words Justin Fields, if he goes to the right team, if you trade him to the right team and he gets trained and he gets coached up 
and he really takes to it, he could have like a Ryan Tannehill renaissance, if you will, uh, or Archie Manning renaissance, which I know I'm going way, way, way back with that one. <laughs> but he could have like a second half, a Geno Smith like renaissance to his career because he has the talent. He has all that stuff with him, but it just isn't quite vibing for whatever reason. If that's the case, then you might have to move on. Because if he hasn't got it up to this point, you really need to get that momentum on another quarterback. You really need to bring in another quarterback to kind of get that momentum heading in a different direction. So that is my ultimate statement about Justin Fields as a quarterback. Is that, yes, he could have a renaissance on another team, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And yes, the Bears are not exactly the best situation ever for a quarterback to be, but coming out of college, he had a major red flag in terms of not being on a pass-heavy offense. And then you put him in a run-heavy offense, and he still is not performing up to what he needs to perform in that offense. I mean, it's not like they had him throwing the football 30, 40 times a game, you know? Uh, make better decisions with the football. Um, have better accuracy. These are things that just haven't been there for Justin Fields. You know, So it's not just the team. His actual performance of the football field has not been great in terms of his decision making and in terms of you know, his accuracy based on the, you know, the statistics. So you got, you got to move on. You know? I mean, there's no other way around it. I mean, you got to move on. So um, if you're asking the question, should – the Bears move on from Justin Fields? I think they should. I think this class of quarterbacks has some interesting quarterbacks in it. I think there's probably two. Uh, there's one guy who is very similar to Justin Fields, J.J. McCarthy. Don't make the same mistake. But you do have a guy in like Caleb Williams, who I know there's a lot of off-the-field issues with him that kind of have some issues here and there. But I think I, I, I honestly – it's a tough decision, but again, I think you have to, it's been three years, the development just hasn't been there, you got to move on. You already have the red flag. You already have the flag, which is most quarterbacks with this profile typically struggle at the NFL level. Quarterbacks who come from really run-heavy offenses that go to the NFL struggle to get their passing efficiency up, unless they do like a Cam Newton-like thing, where they're just this crazy, ridiculous athlete and do these amazing things, you know. But Justin Fields hasn't done that. He hasn't had that Cam Newton rookie season. You know, he hasn't had any season like that thus far. With flashes here and there, but really hasn't put it all together. So you got to move on. So bottom line, those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jim Coburn. You can also check out more information, more data stuff at patreon.com slash jcoburn. Also check out my ex or formerly known as Twitter account. At Geometrics, at J I M E T R I C S. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!